Hey everybody, Joy here. It is almost four o'clock on Monday afternoon on April 12, 2021. And I'm making my kimono. I told you in my last video I was gonna make a kimono out of that gorgeous fabric my dear friend sent me from California. And so I'm working on my kimono pattern. I did all of the red seam allowances with the red erasable colored pencil. I taped it so it wouldn't tear. Then I pinned it together like I had made it with a sewing machine and I put it on my body. And lo and behold, guess what it needs? <laughs> it needs an FBA, a round back, and a sway back. Shock of shocks. <laughs> You know, I should start a pattern company that has all those things already in the patterns. <laughs> I have to do them so much. But not only that, when I had it on, I noticed that the shoulder was high out here at the tip and I pinched it. And so I know that the shoulder slope isn't right. My shoulder is more sloped than this shoulder is. So I'm going to change the shoulder slope. And I've probably shown you this before. But I know how watching something over and over helps you to remember it. So I have clips, I have all these little clips here in the armhole for when I tried it on. And I tried it on over this because I figured, you know, I'm going to have pajamas on or it's a kimono, so it's going to go over clothes. And still I needed those adjustments. So I'm going to tape all my slits back together so this is all solid now and there's no slits in it because we don't want to be cutting the pattern up until we put it back together so I'm going to show you how easy it is and you've got to do it on the front and you've got to do it on the back the front is a two-piece it's got this top part and this bottom part and this actually is going to be the bus dart where these two pieces sew together. So this is going to be so fun. Somebody said, you can wear those outside. <laughs> I probably will. <laughs> it's probably going to be too pretty to wear for overnight gowns. <laughs> but most of my clothes are prints. So I can't see these gigantic flowers going over my print clothes. But we'll see. Did I get that all taped back together? Nope. Got one more little slice here. Okay, so I've got that armhole back together. So, I'm going to change this shoulder slope, and I am going to change this shoulder slope, because we have a front and we have a back. So, I'll tilt the camera down, try to get it so you can see what I'm doing really, really good. I've shown you this before, but some of you may have missed that video, or... I'm starting to make my videos different, so it's not just some goofy picture of me. It's actually words showing what I'm going to teach you in the video. So I think that will be more helpful. All right, let me turn the camera down. Get a ruler that will encase, and this one won't. You need a ruler that will go from this side seam over to just inside this curve, and this one won't. So I'm going to get a wider ruler. So here's the reason you need a wider ruler. You want to draw a straight little partial box around this armhole. You want your top of your shoulder seam under your ruler and you want this side seam over here under your ruler and you want to be oh about 5 8 inch down here and over the narrowest part be sure nothing's hanging outside that you're not going to cut you want to cut a solid piece and when you see me cut it in a minute you'll see what i mean and you need it to be straight i am going to unpin these two pieces together because i think it's kind of distorting it so all, all you need is the part that has the shoulder and the armhole you need the whole armhole and the whole shoulder so, we know we've got a straight of grain mark over there, 
So I'm going to move the straighter grain mark so it's even. You see all these lines? You see all these lines here on my mat? I'm sure you've got them too. Line it up so your straight of grain line is straight on one of those lines. Put some weights down on it to hold it down. Some removable tape, a tape dispenser. Put something down there. So now we are going to encase this armhole as narrow as we can and still get all of it. And we want it to be straight, so we're going to go by a straight line out there. You need some nice rulers, my friends. This is a 6 inch by 12 inch. It's a nice size. So I just want to make sure. I don't want to cut very far into the shoulder, but you've got to get in far enough that you contain it. So I'm going to go out there on that first line that I can see. I'm going to cut this L. Let's call it an L, a backwards L. Right there. You see that green line? It's a backwards L. And I'm going to draw another line underneath my L line. And I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use blue. And I'm going to draw it one quarter inch down below that line because that's how far I need that shoulder to come down out there. So we're going to move it down that far and I'm going to put some lines on it just so I can line it up again. Like little notch lines. Now I'm not going to cut on the blue line. The blue line's where I'm going to move it down to. I'm cutting on the green L. Cutting in and then cutting up on my green L that I matched up to one of these blue lines. I matched it up to one of these blue lines here to make sure I've got it straight. Now if you happen to screw it up, stop the presses and tape it all back. Say, oh no, I didn't do it right. Tape it all back together. Tape it, tape it, tape it, tape it. Go get a drink and a cookie or a piece of chocolate and then come back and start over. So we're going to move this down. You see this piece right here? My shoulder needs to go down. My shoulder out here, I need the pattern to go down. It's too high up. It's too high up. So I'm going to move it down that one quarter inch. And since this is an extended shoulder, it'll work out just fine being a quarter inch difference right there. Now you're not, this isn't going to match up anymore here. This is all going to be screwy now, so don't pay any attention to that. Just make sure you're moving this L straight down, straight down on your straight cut, and straight down to this one quarter inch line, and use your removable tape for this. My removable tape has been removed. Ha! Ah, here it is. Okay. Removable tape is our friend. In case we make a big mistake, we can remove it. Okay. I learned this from a lady whose name, of course, I can't remember. But she's a lady that works at Threads. Judith, Judith Newcomb. I remembered it. Can you believe it? Can you see? See how this is lower now? This is still up here. And now this is down here a quarter inch. So what we're going to do is, we're going to get a piece of paper, like we always do. And I've got paper all over the floor from cutting this pattern out, so we'll just use some of it. And we'll put it right there where our notch is that we just created. And I'm going to use permanent tape this time. Why? I'm going to use permanent tape. Because if I make a mistake here and I have to remove this strip, I can just cut it off. I can just cut it off right there. And it won't mess up anything. See there, I added the paper and filled that in. So what do we do next? Next, we're going to join the part of the shoulder that was okay to the new shoulder that is now lower. So we're going to take a colored pencil, 
What color can you see the best? I think the green, maybe. Get your ruler. You can use this so you can slap down this ruler. This one doesn't slap very good, so slap this one down. <laughs> it's in my Amazon store if you want one. Everything's in my Amazon store now. It's so awesome. I'm going to do it really dark so you can see it. See my green line? See how now my shoulder has dropped over here? And now my line is straight again. You cannot say, well, why don't you just cut that side off? You can't just move your ruler down here and say, oh, I'm just going to cut that off to make the shoulder fit. Why? Because when you do that, you change the armhole. You don't want to change the armhole. You want the armhole to stay the way it is. There's nothing wrong with the armhole. That's why you move the whole armhole down and then redraw your shoulder angle. Hopefully that shows up good. I'm going to cut it now. And yes, it's going to cut off part of the original pattern, so make sure you know what you're doing. Save all your parts. I have been known to dig them out of the wastebasket. And there it is. All fixed. Now that changed my 5 8 inch seam line, which is red, but that's not a problem. It's very easy to see that the seam line has moved. So now I'm going to do the back. So you want to see me do it again? The way I'm going to do it is I want to make sure that I cut the back in the same place that I cut the front, and I cut it right there. But my L is now one quarter inch lower. And there's my entire armhole still intact. Have not changed that armhole at all. All I have done is change this line up here and make it a different angle. If you can see my pants and they look like they're falling down, that's because my pants are falling down. Because they're too big. <laughs> okay, up here we're going to use real tape. We're going to take that down permanently because if we make a mistake up here, we can just cut this off. We can cut the tape off up here. So let's get the blue and let's draw our new shoulder slope, which I hope you can see because I won't really know till I edit this. Now I'm doing that backwards so you can't even see it. Let's do it this way. Can you see it if I do it this way? Let me get my slapable ruler. You're going to line your ruler up with the point over here at your neck. And you're going to line this side up with the new top of your armhole. This used to be up here, now it's down here. Lining this up with the neck and this up with that new quarter inch lower mark. Then we're going to cut that line. Can you see the blue, Sue? I think you can. And so now we're going to cut that new shoulder slope. Isn't that amazing? I was so excited when I learned this one because you know I used to do it I just told you not to I used to just cut the thing off <laughs> well that just totally messes and then what I would do is I would cut the armhole lower no 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 don't do that don't do that okie doke that's it so now 
your new back shoulder matches your new front shoulder and your armholes are exactly the same as they were before. Okay, so you know I'm making a kimono, right? I'm making a kimono. I'm making view B, that one right there. Because I only have two yards of fabric. And I like my coats short. I do not like to sit down and have stuff underneath me and around me when I'm sitting. I like it to be up here, so. <laughs> I'm making the short one, even though the short one's not that short. Yeah, it will come down to my hips, but it won't be down to my knees and my ankles where it's just extra fabric that gets in my way and I fight with it all the time. I mean, you know me, you see me stand next to Jerry, you know I never ever stand still. <laughs> I don't ever sit still either. So I have to have manageable clothes. I'm gonna put the full bust adjustment in it and then I'm gonna move the full bust adjustment into this seam right here where the top joins the bottom. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I have no idea if I'm doing this exactly right or not, but if it turns out, I'm going to go, oh my gosh, I wish I would have showed them. <laughs> so I can always cut it out. But you see, I've removed the bottom. There's the bottom piece of the front. The bottom front goes on to that top front. So I'm just doing the FBA in the top part. So I marked my apex, I cut up from the bottom to my apex and over to the armhole, jumped the seam line, and then cut again, and so that's crossed over right there in the armhole. Now I'm separating this one inch, because I need a one inch FBA, and then I cut over here, where there's going to be a bust dart. But I'm going to move the bust dart down into this seam right here, by closing it up. That's my intention. Now, I don't know if it's going to work, <laughs> but that's my intention, is to just take that and put the bus dart down in here, and then what that will do is it will, um, number one, it will lower this, because I need the extra distance. It'll lower this piece, because you can see this piece is already down here, so that piece has to come down too. And then I'm going to close this bus dart out and try to make it be in here somehow. Just coming back to show you how I've added my paper. One inch, from here to here, one inch. It puts all this extra up here for your bust. Puts all this in here for a dart. And I'm gonna try to move the dart down here. Have no idea if I can, but we'll see. I may be learning something brand new right along with you. Here's the next thing I did. I filled in this space here and I measured from here down to here. It was one inch, so I added an inch all the way over there. So that's the new bottom of that top piece. Is that going to make the front longer than the back? No, because we're not changing the side seam at all. Now I've drawn the designer's dart. Here's my apex over here. There's point of the designer's dart, not the, not the dressmaker dart, the designer dart. Here's the outside edge of it, and here's the other outside edge of it. So that gigantic thing is the designer's dart. I can tell you that what I want to do isn't going to work. I'm experimenting here, remember? <laughs> I may be in bed tonight watching Marta Alto's bust. DVD. I have seen her do something like this. So what I've done is I have cut it. I have cut the designer dart so I can move it. The problem is it doesn't have any place to move to. You see? There's no place for it to move to because you have to open something for it to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down into here. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut, and boy honey, I'm teaching you this, I'm teaching myself this just as well. And the next time I go to do this, I'm going to have to watch my own video. So I'm going to cut down into here. Now, when I close this bus dart, 
It's going to move my side seam all crazy, but that's all right. I can redraw that. And now I have my bust dart right here. You see this? And what I'm going to do is I am just going to gather this. It needs to be gathered back into an inch because I am going to cut all the way down through this bottom piece and I'm going to spread it an inch as well because it's not going to line up with the top piece until I add this much to it here in the middle. You want to add it in the same place you added it to this piece. So it will be a little bit extra because I've just moved the dart down into it. So what I will do is I'll fill it in with some more paper and then I will draw a nice line a nice little line to join that but I will gather this part that is now bigger than an inch I could even gather it on over to here if I wanted to I guess so it wouldn't be too tight but I don't think it's going to be very tight at all so I will gather this one one and it's almost two inches let's say two inches so I will gather this two inches so it's back to one inch and then this will be the same distance as this that has to sew to it because I am going to spread this one inch this piece down here because I need it I need the fullness because it was a little bit snug because I made it what did I make it for I made it for my upper bust measurement <laughs> yes <laughs> and my belly measurement wants to have a bigger size just like my actual bust does so it works out for me if you don't want the fullness in the bottom part, you can take it off of the side seam, is what you can do down at the bottom. Now, I am going to fix this over here the same way I did the shoulder, and I'm just going to cut a new line like that. I'm just going to cut a new line just like that for my side seam because I've closed up that dart that I invented that wasn't there before. There's my new side seam. So let's make this a nice little curve if we can. That kind of wants to go like that. I think that's the way that wants to be. Just like that. You gotta connect. You have to have connections in this life. So this is my new top piece. You can see it has changed a lot. The armhole has not changed. I'm going to cut that out of the armhole. I'm going to cut the extra paper off the back that I don't need back here because it's just going to be majorly in my way. That's where I closed my bust dart, so I do still need it. I want to use temporary in case I need to put this all back together. <laughs> I've had to do that before. Alright, bust dart's closed. Right here, I'm going to gather when I make this garment, and I'm going to make that go down to one inch from there to there. And so now, this will reach my center front, which was the problem before. It would not reach, and now it reaches fine. See that? And it comes down a little lower, and it needed to come down a little lower. And I will simply take this, and add one inch to it approximately in the same location. I'll measure this up to that dart right there. And then I'll come over here to see where I added my inch and I added it right there. Right there is where I added it. And I added it going that way. Okay? So now I'm going to cut this all the way down. All the way down right there. Then I'm going to add one inch of paper in the crack. And then this will line up to the top. But the back is going to have 
the round back up here and the sway back down here. And the back will be done and I'm going to cut this out and sew it together. Probably be in the morning. But I'll be sure and let you see what it looks like when I'm all done. This is a tip. <laughs> I am making view B right there with the circle around it. View B does not have a tie in the front. I've decided that I want the tie in the front like on this view right here so I can tie it together if I want to to hold it shut. So this is the tie. It's piece number five. Now I sort of cut it out. I've cut around it. I haven't cut on the lines. I use my quilting rulers to cut shapes like this. Because when you're using slinky material or any material, it is hard to run your rotary cutter just straight, 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 and up and over and down and straight, 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 straight. It is much easier to use a ruler. So what I do is I measure or measure, as my husband says, how wide it is. And it is one and a half inches, one and five eighths. It's one and five eighths inches wide. Then I measure how long. And I have a ruler right here on my mat. It is 23 inches long. So I am going to get my 24 inch ruler because you can't cut 23 inches with a 12 inch ruler. So I am going to put my ruler down here. These quilting rulers are really, really nice for making garments as well as quilts. They really are. I cut it right in there. Right in there. That should be plenty of room. Leaves me enough room for my sleeve. And then I'm just going to cut a straight line all the way across here. I've decided I am going to use my longer ruler because it's got some little sticky things on it to make it stay still and not move. So since I have a nice ruler that's long enough that won't move, I'm going to use it. I'm going to cut straight across right here. I've got plenty of room to cut my sleeve out. This is going to be cut up here. So I've got all this room above my sleeve to move it up and down if I need to, okay? Because this is going to be cut on this side. So let's go, Joe. New blade. Always put a new blade if you can. Oh, that worked real good just lining both of those up. Look at that. <laughs> that worked out so good. So let's move this away. One and five eighths. One and five eighths. Right there. See? 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 See that nice little strip? Isn't that nice? See how slinky it is? It does not want to stay. All right, so we're going to do one and five eighths again. And there we go. So there's my one and five eighths inch. And I'm going to line that up. And I'm not moving it because I don't want it to move. <laughs> I want it to stay flat and together and not slide all over the place. Oh, if you don't have these weights, my friends, please get some. These are nuts. They come from Ace Hardware. The other ones are washers, and there's three. There's three of them together because one washer isn't heavy enough. Now, you'll see Peggy Sagers just throw her cell phone down or something. Okay. So there are my two ties. There's my pattern piece. Here's my two ties, and you can see they're exactly, exactly. Isn't that nice? And super, super straight because I cut them with my quilting rulers. End of that tip. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> you want to see my finished kimono? Yeah, I've just been trying it on for the very first time since I finished it. I've been making this particular video for days and days and days. <laughs> I decided it's time to finish it and get on with my next project. So, 
I'm going to tell you right now the hardest thing in the whole wide world. I may have already said it. I have no clue what I've told you. I know I've showed you how I made this fit me. <laughs> but I don't know if I showed you my difficulty with these skinny, skinny ties. I like to have never gotten them turned, and I have everything there is to turn ties with. I swear the easiest way is to put a safety pin in and run it through, like the old-fashioned days. Okay, so it has these ties right there. It has the little um, seams going across here, and when I put my FBA in it, I put it underneath my bust and turned it in to gathers right here. So that's where the FBA is. You know I've never made anything in my life that has long sleeves. <laughs> and these cannot be pulled up. But my friend sent me this gorgeous fabric and I could not wait to make it up. So let me show you what it looks like tied. Let me show myself what it looks like tied. <laughs> now the actual pattern is quite a bit longer. The actual pattern is probably two inches, three inches longer. You're supposed to take a very narrow hem, but I took a two and a half inch hem. I didn't like it that long on me. To me, it just sucked up too much of my height. I left the sleeves the way they were supposed to be and just hemmed them up however much they said. And they, they I could tell, you know, when I tried it on that it would end up in a good place. So this is my kimono. My very first, but the fit is perfect. It's just perfect. And of course, in, in something like this, if I had just made it up right out of the pattern, it probably wouldn't have looked awful, but um, it would have gaped here, and the shoulders would have been way out here, and <laughs> the back would have kept pulling backwards, and, and it just would have bugged me. You know, it's a jacket, nobody would have thought, oh, look at that, really fits her horrible. But I would know because of how it feels when it's on me. I like my clothes to feel good when I'm wearing them or I'm never going to wear them. And that's just as simple as that. So, what do you think? There's the inside. Remember I told you the inside was pretty too? Has a facing up here, a facing that goes around the back. And I reshaped this. Took my usual tuck down to the bust to make this lay against me and the back was fine the way it was. I didn't have to change it in so far as the neck, the facing and the neck, the roundness of the neck. So this is it. All done. I'm going to start sewing quilts really soon. I promise my new Mission in life is to finish all my quilts. And my new way of making myself do that is to only, only do quilting projects in the RV and at my daughter's house. Because that way I will just have to take little pieces of fabric, cut out little pieces here and there, and I won't have to have all of the yardages that it takes to make garments. Isn't that a good idea? I think it is. <laughs> Bye for now.